things I have learned to improve my water drop collision photography. The main one I found out is remove any variables, anything that could potentially change between your settings. First off on most cameras is your shutter. So on my Canon, let's go to the mirror lockup, just enable it. It's usually one press, mirror lockup, second press, take the photo. So you press the shutter to begin with, opens the shutter, you trigger the water drop from the app and that fires the camera. As you can see this is my current setup for water drop collisions. I'll start from the top and work my way down. On the top I have of course the water drop kit. Currently I've got the uh, MyOps one set up but I've also have the Pluto one. Not much different between the two. Now I found out if I want to get a high collision, mid-air collision, have the drop come down further. It's like dropping a pebble into a puddle. The higher up you are, the more of a splash you will get. Now, I've got a chunk of wood at the top here. Now, when I'm working higher to get the higher um, splashes, explosions, collisions, the vibrations from the solenoid opening and closing cause that water drop, when it comes down, to basically drift. So, big chunk of wood on top helps to absorb those vibrations. If I'd got a big solid frame all the way across, it, it wouldn't it really wouldn't matter. But uh, I found having the arms that come with the uh, even the MyApps, or you can buy separately for the Pluto, they work great when you're working low down because there's not much drift. When higher up, I've got a higher chance of the collisions missing. But as soon as I put a big chunk of wood in there, it was absorbing those vibrations. On the sides here, you'll see I've got Perspex. Uh, 500 by 500 sheets of frosted Perspex. I think it was 80% letting through of light. It acts like a softbox. I happen to have two flashes on each side. You can still do it with one or two on each side. Um, but you don't get the burnt out highlights on the collisions, on the water drop themselves. Now, important thing is, if you're using more than one flash, to have the same brand, make and model of flashes. And also with the triggers, at least have the same brand and possibly the same uh, make again and model. Otherwise, the differences between flash brands the flash or burst of light can be different. It's never exactly the same. One will be either trigger quicker or last longer than the others. But if you've got them all the same, they all operate the same. Now, for the observant of you, you'll see I have two mobile phones. One's my current one, and one is my old one. Broken camera on the back. Now, the old one, it's a smartphone still, that one operates the water dropper. New versions of phone, they now have on video a slow motion option. Now, when you're setting up and trying to get the collisions, and you can't see, of course, where they're happening, when you're triggering the dropper, put a slow motion video on. Record it and then play it back. You can now see where the flash is happening, where the collision's occurring. You can either lengthen the time between the second drop, or shorten it, or lengthen the time of the flash delay. And then you can see again if you're gonna capture it or not. Now, the more observant of you again will notice I have a 100 watt light by the side of me. Now, when I'm actually taking my photos, room lights are out. And when I've got it all set up and all collisions going, this little stand light goes out. But it's great just to stick at the side, highlight through the side, 
and it'll help you see the collisions happening in slow motion on your phone. Without the light, you don't really get anything. It's too low light um, for a slow motion video to work. I'll try and explain this pretty quickly. I explained this to Lee and he picked up on it quite quick. You'll see everybody in all the videos say the water drop point of impact, put a pen, mark where it comes down, put something in the water there to mark it. Yes, that is the point of impact, but it's not the point of the collision impact, the explosion. We're working at macro, so our depth of field is extremely shallow. So if I'm aiming at the screw in the picture there, I'm gonna get a lovely sharp stem. But the explosion which comes towards me will be blurred, out of focus. Think of it like this. Your stem of the glass is where the water drop hits. The cup part at the top is the explosion. You wanna focus in front of the point of impact. So I focus on the screw, literally one screw width towards me. So, if the camera's over there, that's the point of impact, I'm gonna be focusing somewhere here. Now, when I'm doing my pictures, my collisions, I've got my cameras on ISO 400 at f22, and I'm almost at the minimum focal distance of my lens. I'm using a 24 to 105 uh, Canon lens. Now, using it at ISO 400 and with two flashes, I'm probably half a stop under the exposure I want, but the two flashes are at, at power 132. If you keep going higher on the flashes, the delay in the light disappearing will cause your images to blur. If you can help it, don't go over at like 132. 116, maybe, but you'd have to check on the brand of the flashes and how long the light stays on screen. What helps to get a higher plume uh, from your first drop is by breaking the water tension. Now, you need a surficant. And Dettol, uh, I'm not <laughs> using them as a brand name, I found them very easy to use, uh, are great for this. Now, there are two here. This surface cleanser uh, is clear. When you add that to the water, uh, it just keeps it clear. Now, if you add the this Dettol, it gives a uh, milky effect, clouds it, depending on how much you put in. It's great for adding a bit of effect um, to the water. You can also use washing up liquid or soap. The problem with that is it causes a lot of bubbles, which is like if you don't want them in the picture, it'd take a long time to getting them out of picture in editing. <laughs> 